Verse 14 is where we get uh, God describing himself and giving his name. It's actually verse 15 is where he actually says Yahweh, uh, the Lord. Anytime you have the word Lord in all caps, uh, that is the term that we're going to talk about here. It's also known as the Tetragrammaton, which is a fancy way of saying four letters. It's Y-H-W-H. And I'm going to explain that in a second. But the first instance of him actually saying that is in verse 15, where God says to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. But he defines himself in verse 14. I am. That is the name of our God that he wants to be known as, that he defines himself as for us to know from beginning to end. And that's the whole point. Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, which those are Greek uh, uh, characters for the beginning and the end. I am the beginning and the end. He who is, who was, who will be, the Lord God Almighty. I am. I exist. Before anything existed, I am. In verse 14, he starts out and says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. Some translations have, I am that I am. Meaning that uh, God does not need to define himself for us, but he exists regardless of how we define him. He exists regardless if we acknowledge him. He is. It just gives me shivers. Uh, it's the one of the reasons that I have it tattooed uh, on my arm here, Exodus 3.14, is because it's, it's all of these tattoos on this side are characteristics of God. Um, John 1.1 1, 1 is the first verse that I have tattooed, followed by Exodus 3.14. Then I have Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, followed by Psalm 23. All of these, I'm not going to go through them right now, it would take too long, but all of these are characteristics of God. And Exodus 3.14, I am is so critical in defining who God is, but it's so simple. It's so simple. So uh, let's talk about the Tetragrammaton. First, I want to pull out a nice small reference. This is uh, the Dictionary of Old Testament, uh, the Pentateuch, and God, names of God. <clears throat> Three main independent forms and numerous compound ones in the Pentateuch designate God. The first of these encountered in the text is Elohim, uh, and the related singular form, El and Eloah, the common noun, God. Genesis 1.1 is the first instance. Uh, 811 times is mentioned in the Pentateuch, and 2,600 times it's cited in the Old Testament. The second is Yahweh, the Lord. That's in Genesis 2.4. It occurs 1,827 times in the Pentateuch and 6,828 times in the Old Testament. We'll come back to that. That is the Tetragrammaton, is Yahweh. And the third is Adonai, a combination of plural common noun plus pronominal suffix, literally meaning my Lord. Genesis 15.2 is the first instance of Adonai. It occurs 17 times, additional times, 18 total in the Pentateuch, and 439 times in the Old Testament. So those are the three names of God that are most commonly used in the Old Testament. Elohim, Yahweh, and Adonai. So, continuing on specifically with the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H. We translate it simply as Lord. And every time in your Bible you have Lord in all caps, that is this word. Some instances they'll do the uh, O-R-D of Lord will be smaller, but still in all caps. Uh, and other times it'll just all four characters will be um, all capitalized. When first used, in ancient uh, Israel, the Jews are so afraid of the third commandment that they wouldn't actually say 
Yahweh. In fact, we don't even know how they pronounced uh, Y-H-W-H. They actually didn't have vowels. Ancient Hebrew did not have vowels. So we don't know today what they would say. We don't know. We do know that when they would read it out loud, they would either replace these four characters with either Adonai or Elohim. And later, church tradition tells us that they added the A and the E, the A from Adonai and the E from Elohim to YHWH. And in doing that, you get Yahweh. Now, if you take the Latin spelling of that, it's a J and a V. Well, that's where you get Jehovah. It's just interesting stuff. Now, the question is, uh, I mean, we now say um, Yahweh. The third commandment is that you will not take the Lord's name in vain. And they were so afraid to even pronounce his name that they just wouldn't do it. And, And there is an element of that where we realize... I mean, today we use Jesus' name as a curse word. That's the opposite side of the spectrum, is taking the Lord's name in vain to such an extent that it's a curse word, or treating it so holy as simply a, a name, but being so afraid to even say it out loud because it's so holy and reverent and righteous and to be set apart. Just an interesting element. Something to think about. Jesus, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, uh, gives us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's even mentioned in the Lord's Prayer. We're supposed to hold God's name reverently, with respect. It is holy. And there's an element to the Jewish tradition that that I feel is lost in, in our being so buddy-buddy with Jesus, um, we do need to remember that God is holy and to be revered as holy. Uh, Join me and flip to John, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 8. That's Matthew. Uh, There's John. Flip me with John, chapter 8, and we're going to read starting at verse 48. John 8, 48. I'll give you a second to get there, those who have their Bibles. John 8, 48. So the Jews are having a discussion with Jesus. And the Jews say, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? And Jesus responds, verse 49, I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my Father and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. At this they exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died. And so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Verse 54, Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father, Abraham, rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Verse 57, you are not yet 50 years old. They said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Verse 58, very truly I tell you, Jesus replied, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, They picked up stones to stone him. We understand what Jesus says here based solely on the response of the Pharisees. Jesus was claiming to be God. 
He says, before Abraham was born, I am. He's using the exact same sentence and statement as Exodus 3.14. He's quoting God talking to Moses and saying, I am. And we know this was a big deal because immediately the Pharisees pick up stones to kill Jesus for saying such a thing, to saying that he is God. It's really cool stuff to, to just connect all this together. Okay, continuing on, verse 18 of Exodus 3. 